Welcome to the inner world of filmmaking. I'm your host, Tammy McGarrow. I'm a writer, director, editor, and a podcast producer. In this show, I will interview filmmakers in all facets of production and distribution. Today, I'm very excited to have the talented Caroline Amaget, who's an actor, voice actor, travel host, and producer. Bonjour. I'm happy to have you on the show, Caroline. Bonjour, Tammy. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. All right. So um, I wanted to start with what got you into voice work? Tell me a little bit about yourself and where you are today. Okay, so uh, hi, bonjour everyone. Uh, my name is Caroline Amiguet. I'm a French-born actress. I was raised in the French part of Switzerland and I am now living in America. I've been here for 18 years, so I guess I'm an adult now. Yeah, yes. <laughs> time flies. <laughs> um, it's been wonderful. I started acting in this country and... Um, but not immediately. I moved here and uh, started working as a PR and community relation for a video game company, which kind of introduced me to the entertainment world and uh, the video game world. And that's where I uh, got to jump into the magical world of the massively multiplayer game online, EverQuest 2. And that's oh, when wow. I saw how the power of voiceover uh, what the power of voiceover can do as the game we were actually localizing um, in multiple languages. I was uh, PR and community relations for the French markets, uh, had Christopher Lee. Oh, wow. As a voiceover actor for it. And it was just like, I was like, what? Can we do that? It was a long time ago. It was not, it was not like common back then especially for MMO. And I was like, this is just incredible. And um, being in this country makes things possible. Um, and I decided to take my chances and jumped into an acting class. And uh, acting is many things. You can be a film stage actor. You can be a voiceover actor. And, um, and everything is linked together for me, at least. Uh, yeah, what a world. I, I know that uh, I was watching uh, Mystic, quest i believe it is on apple tv and that's about the gaming world too and just yeah. like it's so uh interesting the the storytelling oh yeah in these games yeah i was fascinated by all the teamwork it required and how immersive it was and how players were just like jumping into it and that it, very very magical Yes, and very interactive. Also, yes, absolutely. What type of voiceover work do you typically do? So I mostly do uh, a lot of travel hosting videos uh, with Visit the USA. Um, it's about localizing in French, or sometimes it's about having a French accent, if it can be for a culinary video. Things uh, like that has been pretty much my niche since I moved here. I also do animation. I do commercial for uh, usually aesthetic food related uh, product. I guess my accent works for that. <laughs> and um, what else? Uh, yeah, that's been it so far. But you would go into the studio to do that, right? I actually did uh, one uh, one looping uh, from my uh, dressing room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> for a studio. So, but you have to have the setting. Uh, you have to have. We have to become engineers almost now. It's just like crazy. And then do they send you equipment or you have to kind of buy your own equipment, your mic and everything? You have to have your own setting, everything, mic and everything. And do they guide you on what to get? Uh, they don't. They ask you what you have. Uh, they tell you if it's okay or not. And you have to get ready. Um, like, I mean, like you get your call time, you get everything. You have to show up. They test you. They, they try it. And then um, it has to be very good. Okay. So then you're um, kind of logged on while they're recording on the other end. Uh-huh. Okay. Got it. You said that you took acting classes, but um, being an actor where you can use your face, your body to... yes to act and and also what you say and what you don't say but with voice it's only your voice I mean did you have to take classes for that with classes it's always better for sure but uh, I jumped into it very naturally because I was on screen for a short film uh, called Lucy by Libby Blood and the the first scene of the scene 
uh, is a shot with my voiceover on it. And she asked me if I could do it. And I'm like, yes. And I had to explain what the word autism mean and what it is. And uh, that was part of the story as I portrayed the mother of a 12-year-old uh, little girl during World War II who had autism. So that was the first introduction to it. So as we kept moving, I kept being booked for projects and people were like, oh, can you do a little bit of voiceover here? Can you do, uh, can you translate that for us? Can you write a cover later for our festival, <laughs> for a festival in France? We want to get, I'm like, sure, sure, sure. So you say, yes, it's like improv, you know, yes, and. <laughs> yeah, right. And the more I would do it, the more fun I would have too. And I'm like, I, I really want to dig into it. It's not only about your voice, it's about also knowing how to use it. So with the looping that I've been doing, uh, it's more about, like I say, an improv improv game a little bit uh, because we are multiple people in a studio recording, having to do like voila sound for movies and all things. So it's very fun because you have each other's back, but that was not enough. And although I've been very fortunate to do it uh, and I've been told by uh, Barbara Harris, who runs the looping group in Los Angeles, you know, you are here because you also know how to act. Uh, it's not only about your language or what you can do is because you can perform you can do something that is needed so I was just like okay this is this is great so um I kept doing it but I was like I want to have good demo reels now and I had been told that in that business you don't get many shots so you have to have good quality reels I booked a big job with the Visit the USA and I decided to uh, save that money and and invest in making good demo reels so I got coaching uh, by uh, with Mark Grau in Los Angeles um, and uh, and worked on making good quality reels so we, and then I got an agent and then things moved but I constantly train right now I'm taking a class at Mesa College as well on voiceover acting and uh, with Jesse Keller and it's very good so I read books like I had uh, let me stretch here this book uh, as well, you know, things like where you get information because as I said now, you also have to be good with your setting at home. It's not only enough to perform. You have to have, you have to know what you're doing. So, right. Just... And the book was The Art of Voice Acting. Exactly. Yeah. By James Elberger. That was a long answer, right? No, no, no. I thought, I thought it was great. Yes, you hit a, a lot of points there. Um, yeah, it was. It got me thinking about some things um, with what you just said. Um, so the demo reel that you did, uh, is it different, a voice acting reel from an acting reel? Oh, yeah, it's only your voice. So you have to have several characters. You have to be able to jump from one thing to another. You have one for video games, one for animations, one for narration, one for commercial. Uh, you have to be able to, to provide this one. So commercial reel is different than a video game reel uh, or an animation reel where you have really, it's more focused on characters and you have to show that you have that energy. And uh, I mean, it's different. It's not the same yeah. product, so it's just what that is. Yeah, that's what I was. I was just wondering um, if it was a visual or an audio. I mean, I thought it was an audio, but then I was like, well, you know, you can't assume. How long do you typically make your reels? Well, for everything, it's like a minute to two minutes. Um, the the acting reel where you are on screen, it can be up to three minutes uh, usually. But like for the voiceover, you don't want to be too too long. Right. Just what yeah. that is one to one minute. 30, I guess. So like, how do you do a commercial? Is that just taking um, voiceover work that you've done in the past and putting it on the reel or you're actually creating something as if you were doing a commercial? So there are like uh, database websites where you can find like reels, like uh, text that can, you have to know what's your niche, your market. And then you select some text and you read it and you can use it and do the post-production on it, add sound, music, follies, all you want. So it becomes like a good quality reel because the voice is not only enough, it has to be immersive. So, uh, so you have websites like that. Uh, you can select that. The same for animations uh, and, and so on. Just know what you can be cast for, I guess. And since you're French and have yes. a 
pretty heavy <laughs> French accent. Um, are you? Do you feel like you're pretty much typecast? You know, uh, yes and no because it's been. Uh, for example, the ghouls. Uh, you asked me about the ghouls in uh, in your email. Um, has been. I was cast because I am. I have a French accent, and actually, you think my accent might be pretty heavy I actually pushed it even more because I I was like I looked at a, a drawing of the character which I have here and I it's one of my my accomplishment having done that project like so I'm so happy to have that little ermine character the big hungry one there which is the one I gave my voice for um, and I saw I saw that drawing and I'm like yeah, she has a heavy French accent. I am the big angry one. Now, give me what you have right now. So it was like, I was like, I'm going to push it. I'm going to have fun. And um, and I kept following up and, and I got the job. Well, that's great. Yeah. And so leading into that, that was my next question is, is can you walk me through the audition to recording of the ghouls? Uh, the big hungry one was your character? Yes. So, uh, pure luck. Done. <laughs> so there are like breakdown services. There are uh, websites where you can apply for jobs. This one came through social media. Uh, social media has good sides to it. Uh, and a um, fellow actor shared the breakdown. And there were several characters that were being cast by Wonderman Studios in, in San Diego. And I came across it and I'm like, okay, I'm I want to do that. Let me apply. And um, they sent me the material and then you have to record it, send it back and uh, wait for feedback if you booked the, the role or not. And then they said, yes, come in. I recorded in studio at the time. And uh, most of the time it's the case, but with what we've been living the past year and a half or two years almost, it's just been a little different. But uh, And it was just amazing. It was so fun. Now, did it take like a day of recording or is it longer? No, it took, uh, I mean, I had to go twice uh, and then I uh, I recorded from home something else after. So I think overall it's like uh, six to six, seven hours or something like a day, I'd say. Uh, and uh, the thing I recorded from home was amazing because they recontacted me afterwards uh, and said, okay, Caroline, we need you to sing. Can you do it? And I'm oh, like, wow. sure. And I'm like, okay, we have that, uh, uh, that composer, a producer in London. We're going to put you in contact with him in touch. And, uh, can you record that song? And, uh, so he was directing me and I was, I was singing. So he's an Emmy winning, uh, composer. So I'm just like, I can't wait for the ghouls to come out. It's been the most awaited projects I've worked on. And, um, but it is what it is, you know, you know, that the reward is really the work mm -hmm. you get to do. And then after you have very little control as an actor about when the thing is going to be released, if it's going to be released. Too. Yeah, that's true. I did see it on IMDb, so I would think there's a Thank good you. chance, a good <laughs> chance. <laughs> Is yeah, that they haven't told you when it's going to yes. be released? Yes, I actually contacted them just before we had the, our podcast um, because I wanted to know um, about having an update about it. And they told me that it was sold to China and uh, Turkey and um, it was up to them now. But hopefully, like, it will happen soon. Oh, good. Oh, good. And so... Oh. When you're recording, um, are there other actors in there too recording at the same time? You know, uh, no, not in this case, unless you do looping and ADR. But when it's a specific character, I was I had my window to to record for the big hungry one, and uh, that was it. Only me and the director and the producer engineer. Like working with the director, uh, how does that go? Like, um, does he, he or she have in mind? what they're wanting you to do, or do they kind of give you freedom? I guess it would depend on the director, but give you freedom to kind of come up with your own character. So they give you freedom to come up with your own characters. They adjust, they ask you multiple takes, different take, because it's not like uh, 
sometimes the drawing come afterwards, you know, like it's just right, like, right. it's just like, okay, uh, so do it differently. Uh, do it angry, do it happy, do it fast, do it like, like so many directions. So you probably have like four or five takes of, of the same line if you're lucky uh to, and sometimes you ask for more because you don't want to leave the booth and then they're like <laughs> okay come on that's enough it's expensive <laughs> <laughs> right but it's fun is it ever a little lonely doing that kind of work that you don't actually get to meet the other actors involved in the project no because you you meet the team Mm-hmm. So for me, it's like you meet the creative team uh, and you have the, it's like the same in film though. Sometimes you just go for your part. The only time you really get to experience the entire script or cast and crew is pretty much theater mm-hmm. because you're there is a an arc to it. But film, you shoot sometimes the end and the middle or it's never in order, it's nev- never in chronological order and and for voiceover, it's uh, it's pieces put together. No, I'm actually, I don't. Um, I'm thinking about it because yes, it's fun to see everyone, but that's the nature of what we do. So, right. Well, now, and you don't get to play off of another actor like as in acting versus voice acting. You're really just alone. Yeah. Right. I mean, who's reading the other? Is the director reading the other person's part? There are some things, but for me, it was more about getting the script in that case and then knowing the story, what happened, and then having my log lines and say it multiple times different ways. Right. So it was not like, I'm actually going to be surprised, you know, (laughs) probably about how it came out. Yeah. Oh, my God. How exciting. It is. It is. Yeah. And then you were also the French audio instructor uh, for The Art of Self-Defense, which I love that movie. That was great. So how did that go? I mean, again, you know, I mean, you're perfect for the role, right? Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) I I like to think I was just lucky. I was just lucky. And, uh, um, but I mean, I don't, it's an old saying, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. I don't know. For me, it was, uh, it was just wonderful. You don't know. There's something at work that makes that the part is yours at that time. You don't know why. But uh, the art of self-defense was, uh, I hadn't seen the film. So when I did that part and when I went to see it in the movie theater, I'm like, I like it. Yet it's, how would I describe this movie? Yeah. <laughs> right? It's right. quite it's quite it's a, a dark uh it's, it's comedy a dark yes. comedy <laughs> yes <Right>? yes <laughs> but everyone i've talked to loved it though so what happened with the art of self defense is like i actually auditioned for the for the french role at the beginning of the of the story of the film for that part and didn't book the job and somehow look on breakdown services i see uh, that they are looking for a French audio instructor, very little information. I don't even know the movie. I don't know the producer. The director is not mentioned. I'm like, yes, I'm just going to apply. Let's see. Then I get an email in my inbox and I'm like, like almost like a spam, the thing. Like I'm like, barely sign coming out of nowhere. I'm like, <laughs> what is it? And I'm like, Hi, I, I'm not sure. I I responded and said, "Well, can we? Can you come and record? It's for that breakdown you applied for." I'm like, "Can you just refresh my mind a little bit?" Right. Here? Because it was bizarre. And then it was it. So I went to LA and uh, met with Riley Stearns, who is the director of the Art of Self Defense, and they gave me direction in the booth. and uh, And when I saw on screen what it was for, I saw Jesse Eisenberg. I'm like, "Yeah." Let's do that. <laughs> yes. And uh, Alessandro Nivola? Mm-hmm. Novola? Yes. Novola. Yeah. Yes. Um, he he is amazing. I mean, yeah. and just the dialogue between the two. I mean, oh, oh, yeah. it's so it's, funny. It's brilliant. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. No, it's been, uh, it's been amazing. Like, uh, all right, let's do that. And the funny thing with that film is like, to tell you, is like it premiered at South by Southwest. Mm-hmm. and uh i was supposed to go but i i end up not going uh my husband went and uh, i i told him like hey it's premiering there do you mind going to to see to see it so he sat in the crowd and he's like oh my gosh <laughs> in the <laughs> end there was the q a he's like 
it's pretty cool to hear the voice of your wife on screen. <laughs> and they were like, yeah. yeah. So it's fun. I think there's always opportunities. It's, are you, like you said, are you prepared for them? And, and say yes. And yeah. it sounds like that's what you, you do is like, you know, when they come, you go, yes, and I'll figure it out later. Yeah, it's, it's yes. And, and, and throwing yourself in it, being professional and, um, and being, yeah, being prepared and, and uh, being a, a team player. You have a very friendly disposition as well. So I'm sure oh, that you're very you. easy to get along with. Thank you, Tammy. It's because you are cool. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. 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 But you were saying like why uh, if my French accent is actually like uh, kind of tap- typecast me, uh, I get roles. I get probably more roles because of it and I don't get roles because of, because of it too. But overall, I get to work on very artistic projects uh, and... Um, and I think like that's all I can ask for, really. Like as an artist, actor, like I get to touch so many different like uh, things. Like it's just like because of it. So it's amazing. Yeah. Well, and also, um, you know, just having uh, being from France and stuff, it gives you like being in America. It's like I, I would think that you would get a lot of roles to play French here. Yeah, well, we are many, huh, too. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yes, yes. Uh, besides uh, Julie Dempsey, Dempsey, right? Yeah, Delpy. I've, Delpy. Delpy, Delpy yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. I was just She's, because I'm just watching her show and I was on like, the verge. Ah. It's yeah. so good. Yes, it it's is. It's so good. She's brilliant, too. Yes, I'm like, is. I keep saying, like, very bold, very real. I'm like, I love that show because we need, personally, I needed something that was talking about women in that age range yep. and I'm like yes <laughs> yes and a little challenging for me with some of their um husbands I was yeah. like I don't know why you're putting up with that yeah but I don't want to do some spoilers for the show but yeah Absolutely. um yeah. I thought the writing was amazing but sh- she's just amazing I mean she's a mm-hmm. great writer director yeah. she directed all of them it's kind of nice to see um, more female directors and writers out there Oh yeah, we need it. We absolutely yeah. need it, and it's a, it's a constant. Um, I don't want to say battle because this is, but like it's being assertive. It's about being bold. It's about not giving up. It's about knowing too that it's important for us to have a voice, because otherwise we just go back to the original setting. And no, we've learned mm-hmm. too much. No, it's time. It's time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I and I'm seeing a lot of uh, the female, um, like Reese Witherspoon and others that are now forming their own production companies. And I was yeah. just thinking, I was watching this uh, show on HBO about women. It's the change and how um, the battle that it's been for director, women directors to mm-hmm. even be um, put in the spotlight at all, yeah. um, or even given the opportunity. And if they have one hit, then you never hear about them again, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I'll just say this. It was kind of sad because at the end of the movie, I thought, oh, this is a great movie. Oh, it's directed by a man. Hmm. Oh. oh they should have oh. directed it. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah. all of that. And then it's directed by a man. So. Yeah. Yeah. And then but, it's about the man, how cool he is about supporting women. Okay. That's cool. Right. But that's not what that is about. That's not what you that know? is. But it's yeah. It's just like the thing again. Yeah. yeah. Now, do you have any inspirations of people that do voiceover work? Okay, then here you go. I'm going to mention a man. <laughs> uh, I know. Well, me too. I mean, I was thinking, do I have only ma- you know male guests on my show? Like, I've really got to think about this. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Robin Williams is yes. just uh, the voice of Gollum, you know. Mm. Precious. Yep. <laughs> and uh, there is one when I grew up, I don't even know he, um, the name, but I grew up watching a cartoon cartoon was Juliet I love you she was a manager of a, of a building complex and she would always pick up like the phone and say pension des mimosas j'écoute like uh, this is the complex of the mimosa I am here mm-hmm. to listen and uh, it just cracked me up and it, it was very strong so it's just the things you know I'm not um, I admire people people's performance I'm not a big like oh I'm a fan of 
Mm-hmm. That's the weird thing. But I've, I I know what's cool. I feel I feel it, you know, I mean, for me. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, cool. I like that. It was great. That took me somewhere. But right. otherwise, I'm not like, oh, this is such and such. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Well, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then um, I was just kind of curious. There's a variety of different types of voiceover mm-hmm. work. Um, I just thought maybe you could just let us know or let the listeners know the different opportunities you could have in voiceover work. I'd say, uh, I mean, of course, there is commercial voiceover uh, and for animation, video games, narration, uh, podcast. <laughs> yep. Um, what else? Uh, radio. I mean, like podcast radio and uh, all all those fields. So uh, I think... It's unlimited. Yeah. And what being we'll, looping. Yeah, what would what, I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry, I do that. That's the French side always interp- interrupting. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like la <laughs> la. Uh being, looping, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um do you have any um suggestions or recommendations for somebody that like to get into this line of work? I'd say just do it. You can do it. Don't be shy. You know, um, make sure you take classes. You have fun. Something I see myself doing. I mean, you always have to absorb things and then be able to apply them. But I feel like don't forget to be organic. Mm-hmm. Um, don't sound like you are like reading something, have fun. It's a conversation. It's something who is your audience, you know? And, um, yeah, I'd, I'd say, I say it's your voice. Use it any way you can. Yeah. And, and I like what you're saying about that. I just, um, I was listening to another podcast and it's just like, it's just reminding us all to just be ourselves and that we're a gift. We have yeah. a gift Mm-hmm. And like you're saying, when you have a voice, be creative with that voice. I mean, really. Yeah. Yeah. It's so fun because you can be so much more, you know, like we, if you close your eyes and really like listen to your voice or listen to what's happening around you, you, you it tunes into, into your senses, like really, it's really strong. And, and I think most of the time, if we if we were able to answer questions without looking at people, we would really go to the core of things, you know, like really yeah. like be honest and be like, okay, not trying to put an act or, or something. It's right. Yeah. No? Yeah. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, and also just, you know, like I think what you're saying, like, you know, when you're really talking to somebody, really listening to somebody and, and, and letting down the guard yes. and kind of being yourself. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, there's so much more to pick up on than I'm waiting till you end so I can say something to what you're saying instead of really listening to what you're saying. Yeah. And what you're actually telling me. Yeah. I mean, yes. you know, yes. if you really listen, people share a lot more if you listen to what they talk about, how mm-hmm. they say it, what mm-hmm. they didn't say. Yeah, I agree totally. Like it's uh, way more. And because otherwise it's almost like we don't listen. We don't really listen to each other. Right. We say whatever we want to say. And we will understand what we want to want to understand. <laughs> it's just like... Right. And I, I think it's just misconnection. It's like, I want to connect with you. So I'm listening to what you're saying that I can say something about what you're saying. Yeah. But what happens, I feel sometimes is it gets to a sidetrack. It's like, oh, you like peanut butter? I, I like my, my sister likes peanut And then I'm over here telling a whole story about this peanut butter. And it wasn't really about the peanut butter. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Or or I've just disconnected from you and now I'm over here telling a story about me and you're like, I wasn't even finished with my story and it wasn't really, yeah. you know, so I think it's just if we could just stop, listen more and really have a, a genuine, you know, yeah. I say intimate, but you know, just a, I see you, I hear you, yeah. I care. Yeah. yeah. It's that. Yeah. Yeah. It's so um, good. Yeah. Uh, I forgot to ask you one thing, just, um, 
I was doing some reading about voiceover work and that, you know, there's a process of training and practicing mm-hmm. and kind of developing that voice. Do you have any rituals? Yeah, uh, I do tongue twisters and uh, I warm up my instrument like I do for acting. And but I get a I get auditions like kind of last minute um, by my LA agent, AB2, talent agency, and Shimon Frida's agency in San Diego. Uh, and uh, you just have to be ready. You jump on, you know, like don't over process it through the brain, I would say, but like be in it and then, and then get, get on the horse. Uh, it's just what that is too. But of course, there is something about like making sure that you don't have mixed sounds or get hydrated that your voice is not tired avoid mint uh it would it would tighten your your cords it's just some things like that that you've read and heard or and what works for you you know you you will know yeah is there any like groups i was thinking about this too is like you know there's editor groups there's actors groups is there voiceover groups to be a part of uh there are a few on facebook uh i'm pretty uh you ask me like for some voiceover websites. Uh, there are some groups I've I've signed up on them, but I'm not so active. I'd say on it, I'm just like eventually you are everywhere, you know. It's right, just like, yeah. uh, but like I actually like put them aside. There's voice one two three dot com for uh, breakdowns, the voices dot com, Bodalgo. Um, there's a new one that I discovered, Bunny Studio Backstage as voiceover um, auditions breakdowns as well. But I mean, it's about it's about Facebook. I'm on some groups and I'm on some uh, French speaking groups and things like that. But I'm eventually, uh, what I noticed at least for me is that I'm not uh, an influencer on social media. I am. Um, it's not about that, but it's a. Uh, all that requ- takes time, <laughs> and yes, and yes. and I'm doing the work. I'm doing work, so I'm busy enough. So I'm okay. I don't say no, but I'm like, uh, it takes time, and then you get carried away on those things. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's just great for the introverts that yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know they can feel like they're connected to a group, and I I think that's what's amazing. I know everybody poo-poo's Facebook, but I think the best thing about Facebook is their groups. Is that yeah. you can be a part of so many different groups you have an interest or meetup for that matter um but it is also good to not only just be in groups but also to interact and take take people outside the group and meet them yeah. um, to really build your network of people versus just staying behind you're right this. you're absolutely right you're absolutely right and i have to work on that i'm i'm uh, fortunate with uh, that's why i take classes too because you get feedback you get to interact a little bit with people and and know where people are at uh but it's true like things have changed a little bit the past uh, year and a half we are moving forward now and it's Mm -hmm. good and we're going to meet more but yeah i have to work on that a little bit well i didn't think that you had a problem with it (laughs) i was just thinking in general not you 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 know you're getting the work you're out there you're doing it I am. Thank you. But I, I yeah. feel like I feel like it's important. And, uh, you know, when uh, when we, you get to talk that way, I, when I get to speak with you like that, I'm like, yeah, you are pointing at something I got to work on. So oh, thank you. Well, I, did, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> I, I just meant it more like in general, <laughs> you know, uh, but talking about that, like before all that craziness that happened, um, I was fortunate to meet many people like I'm I met. Uh, Ty Mabry for Bang Zoom Pow, who were just reached out to me to record a short film in which I'm the protagonist. Uh, it's set in the future. It was fantastic. Uh, and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, it's about also keeping in touch and remembering uh, with whom you worked in the past. And I think if you made the connection, you know? Yeah. Well, and that's what I love about San Diego is, um, I just think that San Diego is just such a friendly place and that everybody really wants to help you and everybody, it just seems like we're all more accessible. Um, You could just reach out and nine out of 10, you're going to get, yeah, sure. Or a response. Um, I'm not so sure about LA. I mean, I lived there for a couple of years and stuff and that's its own breed and entity. Maybe it's more, um, you know, at a higher level in some ways that Mm -hmm. there might just be a little bit more competition, you know, versus here. uh, 
I think there's a little bit more laid back, but yet there's a lot of great, great professionals here. No, really the, talented people. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, kind, like you said. So let's talk about your podcast. Uh, what's the name of it? What's it about? And where are you at with it? Okay, it's a work in progress podcast right now. And it's going to be called Pardon My French. Oh, and my desk. So uh, it's going to be about travel because I was fortunate and I've been fortunate to do a lot of traveling, uh, travel hosting videos with uh, Visit the USA throughout the US. And I learned so much about this country, which I love. And I also, uh, I'm also going to speak about film and cinema, uh, fashion and uh Anything perhaps that he is related with being an an expat in the U.S., you know, something like that. So I'm actually working on it. It's a work in progress. But uh, if you are interested in following what I'm up to, I have my uh, channel on SoundCloud and I'm also on Instagram, Caroline Amigay. <laughs> there you go. All right. Um, well, okay. So um, where are you at in the process? Have you recorded anything? I just did the intro, but I'm mostly writing right now. Okay. And then I have a bunch of uh, research that I've made on places that I've been uh, to uh, in the past because uh, part of travel hosting was also about coming up with uh, the material, the places you were visiting. So those are all things that I wrote. So so are you going to do like a lot of sound design in it? Do you have what your style is going to be for the show? Not quite yet. It's going to okay. be French. American. Right. I like <laughs> voilà. it. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you for asking. I, would say, I feel like it's a little too soon to speak about it, but I appreciate the opportunity. Well, I think that we should speak about it so that you, for sure, you will put it out there. I think that, the thing is, yeah. is that a lot of times, and I know this, is that, you know, you can get all excited about projects and you think about it, you talk about it, and then it doesn't happen. But yeah. I'm here to tell you it's going to happen. Yeah, you're gonna make that happen. And if you need any help or anything, just let me know, you know, I, I love to brainstorm that. and stuff. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I, I'd love that. Do we yeah. do it over the internet? Or do we do we do it in real life? Maybe that we would be one of those gathering. <laughs> yeah, we could meet for coffee. And we'll just like put you yes. know, pencils in our behind our ears. And we'll have some pads. And we'll just like drink coffee and talk. I love that. And then maybe we'll talk about the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds productive. You know what? It goes always through that until you have that ding moment. So absolutely. Right. Well, and everything is that. That's what's so cool about life is that, you know, when you're thinking about something and you put that out there and then all of a sudden somebody's reaching out to you or that it's you funny, hear right? something, you know, it all yeah. just kind of comes together if you're open to it, and which it sounds like you are. I mean, it sounds like everything you kind of put out for yourself, you kind of attract back. Thank you. I, I, I do. I, I just, uh, I've, I'm a creative and I, it's just, it's just my way of being. If I stop being creative, I'm unhappy. So I have yeah. to keep doing things like that. The thing is like, things is like, an idea is one thing. There's a lot of work behind it. That's something I've yes. learned. But, <laughs> yes. but it's wonderful. The, there is a lot of gratifications out of it. Yeah. Yeah. And podcasts are fun. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. I mean, this was a great conversation. I hope you enjoyed it. And Oh, yes. Thank fun. you so much. I feel like, oh, my gosh. I'm like... This is great. The inner world of filmmakers. Like I'm, yeah. I feel like I got a great meeting today too. And uh, thank you for, I can't wait to hear all the, all the people you've invited, the guests. It was a real delight. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you too. Thank you so much for listening. I encourage you to get out there and make a film. Reach out to your local filmmakers group to get involved and connect. Please subscribe to the show if you like it and follow me on Instagram at Tammy Maguero. Until we meet again, What's your story? <laughs> <laughs>